Hey everyone, my name is Joe Correa. I'm an enterprise solutions engineer at Wiz. Um, and today I will be covering the topic of accelerate AI innovation securely with AISPM. So what's AISPM? It's AI security posture management. So similar to what you've heard of in the past around uh, cloud security posture management, well, we now have this new acronym, AI security posture management. All right, let's get going here. So uh, recently, uh, our very own WIS research team conducted a survey, and that survey uh, concluded that today, 70% of organizations are using some form of cloud-based managed AI services. Uh, so that can range from the exploratory phase of just kind of dabbling in those services, or it can mean uh, actually live in production with uh, AI, uh, cloud-based AI services. And what I think is interesting here is a similar survey that was done found that 80% of cloud organizations or organizations that are leveraging the cloud are using some form of managed Kubernetes services. Uh, and what's interesting here is that Kubernetes, managed Kubernetes specifically, was actually a technology that was introduced almost 10 years ago. And yet we have 80% adoption. And here we have AI managed services with 70% adoption. And these services were just introduced just a couple of years ago um, at most, right? And so what that tells us is that there's a rapid growth in these types of services um, being leveraged at organizations, right? Um, so over the course of just a couple of years, we have 70% adoption, whereas it took you know, almost 10 years to get 80% adoption for something like cloud-based Kubernetes uh, or managed Kubernetes services like AKS, GKE, EKS. Similarly, uh, we have a study uh, that called out inaccuracy, cybersecurity, intellectual property infringement as the most cited risk of generative AI adoption. And here we can see some of the other um, categories that were listed out, but more importantly as well as we see that organizations are actively working to mitigate this risk and they're working on cybersecurity more than any other category. So that kind of um, sets the stage for the, the conversation today. Um, Similar to what was happening 10, 15 years ago with the introduction of the cloud to new to environments, right? Uh, the cloud introduced a lot of complexity to organizations that were traditionally uh, leveraging on-premise data centers. Well, this, we're seeing the same thing with AI adoption. AI adoption is adding a new layer of complexity and it really begins because it's a new environment, right? We're introducing new complex systems, new data pipelines into this environment. And uh, what that introduces, right, all of these new services and um, yeah, cloud managed AI services, it introduces new risks to that, uh, to the environment. So you have things like data leakage, you have AI uh, model vulnerabilities that are, uh, that are new and novel. Um, and then, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, we were hearing, hearing about SQL injection. Well, uh, we might just start hearing about prompt injection as a new risk uh, vector, right? Um, and that's gonna be specific to AI pipelines and the use of cloud managed uh, AI services. And then lastly, uh, with this introduction of AI technology, uh, there are new skills to uplift, right? And not only are there new skills for security practitioners to, um, to hone in on, but we're also introducing new personas into the development uh, pipeline in, and into the environment, right? So you now are dealing with AI researchers and data engineers more than ever before because of the how easy it is to adopt AI services from the major cloud service providers like AWS, Microsoft, and uh, GCP. So this really all boils down to people, process, and technology, right? Uh, and security today is a main uh, adoption blocker of AI. And that's because of these three components that I just mentioned there, right? So we have people, uh, there's a general lack of knowledge in AI and how uh, how could that not be the case, right? All of these services seemingly popped up overnight. And so now we're having to learn about them and having to learn about how to secure them, right? Um, along with that, uh, it's not just easy stuff to pick up. Uh, AI pipelines are very complex. Uh, systems are designed and fragmented across multiple tools and steps. And so you have to have, you know, approach this holistically. And then lastly, uh, from a people perspective, AI teams today uh, lack security awareness, right? So a DevOps engineer or an AI researcher, they can spin up services within AWS, Azure, and GCP very quickly, but they're not necessarily focused on, on security, right? They're not security minded first, which is why you know security professionals need to um, start their investigation and start to close that gap uh, as far as uh, security knowledge for AI. 
the new risks that are being introduced, I talked a little bit about them already, but data leakage, uh, what data might leak from a certain specific model or what training data is exposed or is it sensitive, right? Do we even have an understanding for what data is being used to train these models? Uh, vulnerabilities in AI models, um, these are becoming more prevalent. And then lastly, lateral movement, right? Uh, so is there potential uh, training data poisoning? Can they use secrets that are being leveraged in uh, the pipelines to move laterally throughout an organization's environment, right? There's just a lot of unknown and new risks that come uh, that stems from the introduction of AI into an environment. And then lastly, we have rapidly evolving technology. Uh, the major cloud service providers are pushing out services at an unbelievable rate. Um, there are hundreds of technologies already available across the three major platforms. And uh, with this rapid innovation, uh, you know, people are playing catch up with how to secure all these services that are that may be uh, in use at an organization. And, and even so from the very beginning, right, how are they, uh, do they even have visibility to avoid any shadow IT? Are these uh, services approved by the organization, right? There could be legal implications as well. And so um, that rapidly evolving technology presents uh, new, ish, new, um, new things to consider as far as technology being used for AI. Um, I mentioned it earlier, but uh, we can apply the learnings from you know, when the cloud is being introduced into environments to what's happening with AI. So first, visibility is the foundation, understanding what services, what tools, what SDKs are being used. Uh, in an organization that are related to AI is kind of the first step. From there, we take a risk-based approach on what to prioritize. And then lastly, we make sure that we have a policy in place so that before um, the pipeline ever hits a production environment, we have actually already secured that, uh, secured that model and uh, are aware of, the, uh, of its posture. So, you know, taking a step back and uh, looking at this in the eyes, from the eyes of a, a security professional, um, what are the four questions that security organizations need to ask or that uh, a security professional might need to ask when an organization is adopting AI? Well, it starts with uh, visibility and understanding what you're running in the environment, right? So do I know what AI services and technologies are running? Uh, I, this is a graph here that's really showing the explosion of AI services over the course of the past year. The graph here shows from June 2023 to October 23, uh, 2023, and that explosion going from 0% adoption to almost 240% adoption at one point, right, in October 2023. And of course, um, a lot of that is due to the uh, huge spike in use of open AI, specifically services like ChatGBT, right? So um, that's why we, we're kind of seeing that spike. But this shows us that uh, there is a rapid rise in these services and gaining visibility is kind of the first step in, in uh, enabling AI across the organization. So do you know where to look for risk across your AI pipeline is kind of a, a second step here. A lot of the risks uh, that you can look for within uh, an AI pipeline are similar to the risks that you would look for in, in cloud infrastructure, uh, infrastructure um, models. However, there's a different naming conventions and different uh, techniques that are being applied here. So for example, uh, you have a training data set, a training job and a training data set. So understanding, you know, what type of data is being fed into that training data set? Is it sensitive data? Is it the right data that's being fed in, right? Understanding that is kind of an attack vector itself. What type of secrets are being used in your AI pipeline? And then, of course, you have some of the more traditional uh, things to consider, such as the networking configuration, right? Is my pipeline and is this AI model being exposed over the Internet? So getting an understanding for the configuration of your networking resources is equally as important as understanding things like what secrets are being used, as well as uh, what data sets are being fed into the model and fed into the, the training um, to produce the, that kind of end result. Uh, the next piece here is, can I prioritize the critical risks across the AI pipeline? So you may have a lot of noise, um, but how do you actually prioritize what you're working on? And in order to do that, you actually have to consider a lot of context, right? And that context has to be readily available to you. And it ranges from business context, right? Is this sensitive data or not? Uh, it ranges to the cloud context, a little bit about networking, what identities are being used, the configuration of those networking resources, the workload context, uh, going specifically into the AI pipeline and the AI models and understanding are there any vulnerabilities specific to that AI uh, model? 
right? Exposed secrets and then the EAI context specifically. So in order to prioritize uh, what to fix within the environment and what risks to uh, remediate, you first have to consider context across the board, ranging from business context all the way down to AI context. Here we have a, a real life example. Uh, I'll let uh, you all read about this at a, a later point here, um, but we, the Wiz Threat Research Team recently found 38 terabytes of data accidentally exposed by Microsoft AI researchers. Essentially, they found an AI GitHub repository uh, through a, a token uh, that was exposed over the internet. They leveraged that token, they got access to the GitHub repository, and uh, through that token, they then came about, uh, identified 38 terabytes of data, and that data, data was sensitive in nature. It stemmed from, uh, it not only had information about the AI models that were being used at, at Microsoft, but it also included uh, employee information. So uh, internal Teams messages were um, available through the use of this in, uh, misconfigured SAS token um, and into the AI GitHub repo. And then the, the fourth question that a security professional should use is, can I detect a misuse in my AI pipelines? So this is actually looking at the real-time uh, traffic of that pipeline. So understanding real-time threat detections. Are there an, an, any anomalies? Do we see data exfiltration of some type? And then can we understand the attack path so we know where to remediate and how to uh, cut this off as quickly as possible? So threat detection to respond uh, to AI threats in real time is, is paramount as well. So this is where we introduce uh, Wiz as a platform to uh, help you all with uh, AI adoption. And we specifically coined uh, AI security foster management, which will give you visibility into your pipelines, the proactive removal of AI risk with context, the de uh, detection of misconfiguration, a misconfigured AI services. And then lastly, we empower your uh, data researchers, your data scientists, your developers working on these pipelines to comply with the policies that you create for your organization. So just a little bit of, of uh, what you would typically see within the Wiz platform. Uh, it starts with that visibility. So a full stack inventory of, uh, of all the AI services. So we call this the AI bomb, right? The AI bill of materials. Every single SDK service, whether it's managed or not, um, would be available under the AI bomb. And that gives you a great place to begin any type of investigation. Not only can you, uh, you know, begin your investigation, but you act, you could actually uh, shift left a little bit by looking at the services that are in use and then marking them as either approved services, unwanted services, or unreviewed services. Right. So typically, what you'd see an organization do is you'd take an AI service uh, that is unwanted. The moment that a developer spins up that unwanted AI service, uh, the security team gets notified so that they can go ahead and reach out to that person let them know that they're now using an unapproved and unsanctioned uh, AI technology, right? So having that visibility and that inventory is really a great starting point for security organizations. And uh, the way that the cloud works today, right? Um, without an inventory view, like the one that you see here, uh, it's very possible that a developer would be able to sp uh, spin up an AI model, an AI pipeline uh, without a security professional ever even knowing that, it, that it's uh, running in their environment, right? And so how can you protect something that you don't even know is there? Here are some of the supported cloud services uh, that we're securing. So you have your SageMaker, Bedrock, OpenAI, of course, Vertex AI. And then we have uh, the product is actually going to enable you to look for misconfigurations by providing you uh, out of the box uh, rules, um, looking for misconfigurations across any of those services that were listed out. Uh, vulnerability scanning would also be included as well. So looking for vulnerabilities in your pipeline, uh, providing remediation guidance to those vulnerabilities, enabling organizations to cut down on the time that it takes to remediate any type of risk that's being introduced into the environment, right? And then providing an, an out of the box dashboard here that gives you a view into all the AI services, their potential uh, impact, the data they're using, et cetera. So at the end of the day here, what we're really able to do is answer those four questions with a tool uh, platform like Wiz. So can I, uh, do I understand what AI services and technologies are running in my environment? Of course I do through the inventory. Do I know what risks exist? I, uh, you do, uh, you have that attack path visualization, which allows you to then prioritize risk and then detect any type of misuse through the use of like our, our real-time capabilities. So that's uh, what I wanted to cover from a um, 
uh, a PowerPoint perspective. I'll take one quick second here to show the actual product itself and just give you a quick glimpse at some of the widgets that we're leveraging here. So we have the, the prioritization of risk broken down by severity on the left-hand side here. We have those misconfigurations that are being detected across my AI pipelines, right? This is an AI security uh, specific dashboard. My typical time to remediation or how long an issue is open, the top issues uh, or the top uh, toxic combinations that have been identified in my environment. Here are those vulnerabilities that are being, uh, that are found specifically on uh, AI uh, services, right? My AI software inventory, we talked a little bit about that AI bill of materials. Um, and then the AI pass inventory, right? So if you're using more of a managed service, uh, you have visibility into those as well. And then lastly, what we've been talking about as well has been the use of uh, data, uh, corporate proprietary data, uh, in order to feed these pipelines and to enable um, the learning of, of, of that data into the, the pipeline. So um, that's just a quick glimpse at the actual product. And that pretty much covers my, um, yeah, my spiel today.